A good Wednesday evening to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God, Hagerstown, Maryland, welcoming you to our midweek Oasis service where we come to find refreshment and uh, get recharged, so to speak. We've got youth group, children's ministries going on, and uh, you and I are going to enjoy an in-depth Bible study tonight. We're in a brand new study we've been in now for a little while entitled Danger Lines in the Deeper Life. And there are dangers that we are confronted with and faced with as believers as we endeavor to go deeper in the Lord Jesus Christ. We began something last week uh, in the second chapter of the book of Judges. We read the 14th to the 19th verse. We're not going to reread them again tonight because of the uh, time it would take. But turn your Bibles to that second chapter. And while you are, let me just remind you, we're here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Youth groups going on, children's ministries. We're enjoying an in-depth Bible study after praise and worship. We're back here Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for the Bible study hour. Bible study for all ages, the youngest to the oldest. 10 o'clock is morning worship with children's ministries going on. And then we're back here Sunday night for our Sunday evening service. Uh, Royal Rangers and Girls Ministries are going on. We supply those for the children. And then, of course, Monday is prayer meeting right here in the sanctuary, 12 noon, as we storm heaven and allow God to use us to move his hand to meet countless numbers of needs. And uh, we are in a needy moment in time. I hope that you will join us so very soon. The second uh, chapter of Judges, we started talking last week about sinning and repenting. This, this ongoing cycle, we looked at the progression of evil and thank God the progression of grace. And we looked at uh, how God dealt with sinful people and we highlighted it in two stories. Third chapter, the seventh through the eleventh verse of Nathaniel. And then in the twelfth through the thirtieth verse of that same chapter, the story of Ehud. And, of course, we brought out the fact that these two incidents following each other in succession illustrates, without a doubt, the progression of evil. And thank God, the progression of God's grace. I'm so thankful that where sin abounds, God's grace does that much more abound. We talked about the long suffering of God last week. We cannot doubt that God always listened to Israel when they cried to him, when they got themselves in trouble. But the saddest effect of their sin was that they forgot his former mercy and failed to lift him, lift up to him their penitent cry. And boy, the consequences that they paid for that. And then we looked at a superficial experience. Those experiences which are only skin deep and have no depth to them. That 7th through the 30th verse, there are some further lessons in connection with these incidents that are worth examining. And noticing all through this period, the people were dependent upon human leaders. They were faithful to God as long, listen, as Joshua lived, but they had no direct dependency on Joshua's God. Keep that in mind for just a moment or two. And we finished by saying that this whole root of bitterness, this superficial experience, influenced by persons and circumstances, while the natural heart still remains and is not personally united to the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the Spirit, and my friends, that lays the groundwork for disaster. No longer will a man teach his neighbor, the Bible says, or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because we all will know me from the least of them to the greatest. And it is God's intent. You find that in Jeremiah 31 and 34, that every one of us know him, Every one of us turn an ear to heaven 
and are guided and directed by his word and his Holy Spirit. Now, we want to pick up where we left off and talk to you tonight, first of all, about patterns to follow. Let's pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious word. Lord, we understand that these things in which we're talking about, these are not milk. This is meat of the word. And I pray God help us not to be mere children that are always dependent on being bottle fed, but that Lord, as we wade into these spiritual truths that have some weight to them that we need this evening, that we will feast upon them and grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. May your anointing be upon your messenger. And Father, may you have your wonderful way, we pray, and we can't thank you enough. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Patterns to follow. We are not, therefore, as we look at these scriptures here, to look for our spiritual example in the conditions of the people of Israel. Don't look around the congregation and pick out somebody that you figure is weaker than you are, and because of it, you think you're doing so good. We're not to compare ourselves one with another. We should look for this pattern in their leaders. And boy, Israel had some great leaders. These men were patterns of what each of us may be today in the power of the Holy Spirit. In this 21st century, you can be a leader for God. You can stand tall for God, having been filled with the Holy Spirit and actuated by that precious Holy Spirit to be God's representative to stand head and shoulders above everybody else and to point people in the right direction. In Nathaniel, we see according to the literal meaning of his name, the lion-hearted man, the man of faith, and holy courage. We need some lion-hearted men today. We need some men of faith today. We need people with holy courage today. We have heard of him before. It was he who, at Caleb's challenge, had dared to assault one of the strongholds they faced. Judges 1.12. And as a reward for his victory, Orthaniel won the hand of the daughter of Caleb, whose name means grace. And with her, he received a dowry of special grace and blessing. Orthaniel, my friends, stands for faith that in the first lessons of our Christian life dares to take the victory and receive the fullness of God's grace. Stop backing up. Stop being full of fear and unbelief. But step up. Trust God. Stand on his word and be a man and be a woman of faith. And dare to take the victory. Dare to be successful in God. And then later, when others need our help, we are prepared to lead them into the same victory that you and I have won and have enjoyed as we have pursued God. My friends, it comes down to this. Defeat cannot be an option for us. It cannot be an option. We must I underline that. Be successful in God. How in the world can I point others to something that I don't possess and that I don't enjoy? How can I talk to you about victory if I've not got the victory? How can I talk to you about faith if I don't have the faith? But the same is true for you in this 21st century. If we are to influence and touch and impact others, we must first possess those things ourselves. There is a story behind every story. I hope that you understand.